Do you grade your commercial landscape clients? Well, in today's podcast interview, I talk with the director of sales from a company that does over 10 million in revenue about why they grade their clients A, B, and C's, and then onboard all new employees, all of them, regardless of their prior experience on the C accounts, plus how they create a healthy internal competition amongst their staff to advance on a clearly communicated career ladder. Hey everyone, Jack Joss is here and welcome to the Landscaper's Guide, where we share inspiring stories about sales, marketing, and leadership for the snow and landscape industry. If you want to grow your company, you need great people. And in order to find great people, you need excellent job ads, but your current job ads stink. So join me on May 10th for a live webinar on how to write killer landscaping job ads that generate a response. Learn more at landscapersguide.com slash events. And now let's get into this podcast conversation with Jeff Cassani from Ideal Landscape Group. Welcome back to the Landscaper's Guide. Today, I'm excited to interview Jeff Cassani. He's the Director of Sales at Ideal Landscape Group in St. Louis. And we're gonna talk about how to grade your clients, A, B, and C, and how you can use that information when you are training your bench, when you're when you're onboarding new employees. Are you gonna put them on the A clients first or the C clients? And Jeff, tell us a little bit about Ideal Landscape Group and a little bit about your background. Uh, Ideal is in St. Louis. We've been around for about 35 years. We have um, 120 employees. We're strictly commercial. Uh, we have three divisions, a playground division. They do municipal playgrounds uh, and a construction division that does large parks and things like that. Um, we have a revenue north of 10 million a year. Um, myself, been in the industry for almost 30 years now, native of St. Louis, huge soccer fan. Pretty excited that we got a soccer team here. A little disappointed that Colorado just beat us, but I won't hold that against you. Yeah. Well, so tell me a little bit about um, how you grade your clients A, B, and C. So an A client for us is a um, high-end, uh, high-demanding commercial property. Could be a business park, office complex, could be even a retail center. Um, a C client, same category, could be office, retail, um, usually they are non irrigated. They're not as demanding. Um, they still want their properties to look somewhat decent. They don't want to let them just look vacant. They want to keep them maintained. Uh, so clients will fall in there. Bees are in the middle. Uh, they'll fall in into one of those three categories. And from there is where we start routing. When, when you're selling to clients, do you offer them the option of being at an A level, a B level, or a C level, or maybe you don't use those words, but do you, do they know that they're selecting the C level of care, but that A level of care is available? Um, they do not actually. We, when we sell a client, we offer only one level and that's an A level, even though it might be a C level client. And we know that internally mm -hmm. we're training our guys to treat every property the same because you can't one day say this has to be absolutely perfect nothing out of place and the next day just say mow it whatever they have to have consistency with that consistency builds your brand um, so it doesn't really matter what type of property is as long as it falls into that consistent a look the the what we don't go after is a, a c client that wants a C product. They want, they, we want the ones that have, they want that higher detail, even though it, it may not have irrigation, it might go dormant in the summer cause it's, it's hot. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still provide that a service to an A, a B or a C. And that's what you use that as your training background for all your guys building your bench. So that when you do have another A client, you have a team ready to, to step in there. And, and so what is it? Is it the services that they buy or is it a re amount of spend? Is it revenue? What is it that actually makes them an A, B or a C? 
it's usually the service, the number of services, the different types of services. Um, and A, you know, they're, they're mowing weekly. They're, they're fully irrigated, um, mm -hmm. bush pruning, uh, fertilizer, tree and shrub apps. They want their property to, no matter what, it has to look good. Every time you leave there, it has to look perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then the difference between all the way down to a C is they might just purchase mulch, pruning, and mowing because they don't have irrigation. They might do one or two lawn apps just to help maintain the turf, but nothing that completely, uh, you know, turns it around. They don't, they don't have the water to turn that turf, that turf around. So they do minimal service, but we still look at it as an A we're, we're providing the services they want, but mm -hmm. we're making sure that when we leave that property, it looks the, it looks like an A client should. And, um, you know, doing north of 10 million in revenue, roughly how many active clients will you have in a year? We have just about 200, 210 clients. Um, we, we also, when we're, when we plan for next year, so we're already in the plans for 2024, we look at what we have, um, employee wise, what type, kind of teams we have. So we know who's going to step up to the plate next year, what, how many A clients can we sell, how many B can we sell, and how many C. That way you're not overselling one area and you, then you're underperforming. We, we take our growth real serious. We, we make sure that when we're growing, we're growing in the right areas. Do you find that the retention rate percentage varies between the A, B, and C clients? Uh, not normally if you take care mm -hmm. of them. Um, so if you take care of that C client, like an A, uh, we find that we actually get more business from that property manager because we're willing to help them out on one of their lesser properties. And they know that it's a mow and go, it's nothing fancy, but we're willing to help them out there to improve that as best we can. Then they're, they're inclined to give us more, uh, more business in the long run. Do you find that the profit margin varies between A, B, and C? And the reason I'm asking is I, I have, I've worked with some commercial businesses and they think they have that A level client and they are buying the most services, but they're also, they didn't, they didn't estimate the, the work properly and their profit margin is actually lower than the C. Do you, do you ever, have you ever had that experience? So, uh, yes, that's a good question. The, in the the A's, sometimes because so many people are competing for those, your mm -hmm. your profit margin might be a little bit less than what you're expecting, and the C's are usually a little bit more. However, mm -hmm. with efficiency, especially if we retain it year over year, every year we're increasing that efficiency, which is is in line increasing that profit margin. Uh, we do have a strict don't go below, you know, a strict threshold to not dip below this profit margin because um, the company's got to survive. If the company can't survive, then nobody has a job. But we found that with our training that our guys have become super efficient at most of their jobs. And if they are not, we study that job and figure out why to get that profit margin back up. But it is, uh, you do find the flip that the A's are usually a little bit less because it's so competitive after it. Yeah, that, that makes sense what you're saying. So internally with your team, so you're, you're onboarding new employees and they're generally assigned to the C level. Is that based on their skill? Like if you hired somebody that had five or 10 years of experience, would they need, would they need to start on the C level accounts and prove themselves to get to the B's or the A's or is it, does it like, how do you, how do you manage that? Um, new, all new employees, whether they have 10 years of experience or we just hired them because they had a good attitude and we're going to teach them. They start mm -hmm. out at that C level because we want them to learn what the ideal, um, expectations are, what our expectations are at our company, mm -hmm. how now somebody with 10 years of experience, they might only sit on that C crew for two or three weeks and move up, but we want them there to learn what our expectations are. There's more margin of error at that, at the C level than there is on an A level. But once they get a mm -hmm. grasp of what ideal landscape is, then they're moving up to another company. Cause we, we want to utilize their talent for sure. 
we don't want them stuck down there. Is this information like public within the company? So like if, if people are currently new and they're on the, they're on the C team, essentially, uh, I, I, can people see that? And does that create some healthy competition or is this kind of just managed privately or how do you, how do you go about managing this? Um, great. We are open book. So everybody knows, and it does create a, a big competition. It's healthy competition. Um, everybody wants to help each other uh, improve. And nobody wants to be at the bottom. We, um, we have grade cards every month. So at the end of each month, we grade every crew that's posted publicly. And the, the goal is for the crews is they don't want to be the bottom. They always want to be at the top. Uh, so there's, there's that competition and, and whoever's at the bottom, they get razzed a little bit, but nothing, nothing out of the norm, but that brings, that just motivates them to move, to improve for the next, the next month. Uh, we also do, um, we have an internal, um, text network and we do photos of the, of the month. So they post their work on there and that, and that creates a competition of, of improvement for, for training as well. They, everybody's trying to outdo the, the previous photo. I like it. So I think, I think this, this, you know, healthy competition, there's a, there's a certain amount of it that, that can motivate people. Um, I've, I've shared that I, I used to actually sell door to door. I, I did door to door sales as a milkman on a dairy farm and they had a whiteboard. And at the end of the day, the sales manager would write your name and your number. How many sales did you make? And there was a weekly total and a monthly total, and it did create some healthy competition amongst us and partly to inspire people of like, wow, there was this, this person, Donna, who would sell consistently 10 or 12. So, and I was getting some days there were four or five, uh, but then they also tracked the retention rate of the different salespeople and every, I don't know. It was just interesting to see that, but it could also create uh, potentially a negative culture or what do you do like, you need to retain the C accounts, right? So if I'm, yep. if I'm an employee and I'm wanting to move up to be on the B team and eventually the A team, where is there a home for somebody to like lead the C team really well? Because like you said, some of those are even your most profitable accounts. Right. There is, um, not everybody wants to move up. You know, there's some people that are happy where they're at. There's a couple guys that, that they just kill the C routes. We offer monthly bonuses based off of the grade card efficiencies, um, and they they have their routes down. They like to be trainers too, so they train multiple different people. Um, not you know you have those that want to move up, you have those that are content where they're at. We're happy with everybody as long as they have a good attitude. If they don't have a good attitude or they come in work all grumpy every day, we don't want them around. Nobody wants to work with them. Uh, but yeah, there are guys that just, they're happy there. They don't want to move up. We utilize them as trainers and they know that that's what they do. They know that they're watching their guys train, move up the ladder and, and, they, and that's what they like. What are, what are some of the, the things that are absolutely part of the ideal way? So you mentioned even when you're onboarding that new employee who has, they have seasoned experience in the industry, what are some of the key components of the ideal way that they need to learn? Um, it's, it comes down to quality, uh, crisp edges, you know, uh, along the sidewalks that all has to be crisp, uh, trash is picked up. It's not, it's not mulched over left in the yard. Uh, beds are free of weeds, um, and no clumps of grasses. So it's, it's kind of, you know, quality is subjective, but there's no grass clumps left behind. There's no weeds and curb lines are crisp. That's three easy to follow ideal uh, ways of, um, of quality. I, I agree that quality can be subjective. And I've also done similar things in my own business with creating little grading criteria for various deliverables for us with, you know, search engine optimization and how we write headlines or how many times are a keyword used on a page. So that way some of those qualitative things that you know work, you, I mean, of course, and when you say these things out loud, it's like, well, yeah, what customer would want 
squiggly edges <laughs> right <laughs> or uh, would want you to miss part of their sidewalk or to have clumps of grass or who wants weeds in their beds they're kind of the obvious things but i think having them written down and knowing that you're going to be graded on them um creates some of that scalability um right. and, and make and makes quality something that you you can expand at the 10 million dollar level um speaking of seo i think you you actually had a question for me about SEO, you guys are doing yep. some. We're currently working on some of our SEO, um, and the guy that's doing it for us, he wants to post uh, a new landing page every three, four days. We felt that it should go all at one time and launch the new site. I don't know what your opinion was on that. Well, I I don't see any reason to wait other than the bandwidth of the person building them, meaning like kind of a quality thing like how many mm -hmm. how many can you really build well um is more of um a consideration for me but i can tell you that at ramblin jackson when we're building sites they typically have at least 20 pages of new content when we're launching them mm -hmm. and we're gearing up towards that to launch it and then we do build out content over time and part of the reason that it takes time is our clients bandwidth to review content and approve it and, and, and make sure that it's done. Um, but there's no reason if, if all of those, all of those pages are ready and they're in the draft mode on your website to, to wait, to publish them from, gotcha. from my perspective. Okay. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for sharing about, you know, grading your clients a b and c are there any other things that are really working with this method of grading your clients a b and c with um onboarding all employees starting on the c team and and then i love how you said that you have these incentives though for the people who are like yeah you know i'm i want to manage the c team and be a teacher and help be a manager and train these people and i'm getting compensated for it is there anything else that we should know about all this we we created a, a very good live career ladder and it spells out their path through ideal gives them a gives them a future um and that with that it has really helped with that internal comp um, competition as well as all of mm -hmm. our supervisors have started in the field and they and you could actually see that they have moved up so not only do we talk about it, it we actually mm -hmm. do it um, and that creates customer retention by creating the uh, employee retention, sorry, create the um, employee retention. And then that in turn gets your customer retention. How are you showing people, literally showing them and helping them visualize the career ladder? Because I think this is this is really important. I know it's something I've struggled with in my own businesses. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I see you being promoted to this role and this role and this role. And some people don't get it and, and that can right. create problems. So I'm curious, how are you, how are so you doing this? We have it uh, on our spreadsheet. It's plat it is posted on the wall so you can see it. Um, each bubble is every level of the company. Uh, inside that bubble tells you what you need to learn or what you need to do to move mm -hmm. to the next level. Um, it gives a range of pay for every level as well. So they can, they know what they're going to earn at that level or, Okay, I'm making this as a as a crew leader or a crew member. Mm -hmm. I could become a crew leader by doing two things and then make this much and then work into a training supervisor or a field supervisor. Um, but that's known to everybody. Our goal is to get everybody on the right in the right seat. Uh, just because you're a great crew leader, you might not be a good supervisor, but you might be a good account manager. So you know, we, we move people around based off of what their strengths and weaknesses are. We had a production manager last year that um, was did a really good job. We moved him to account management and he's killing it. He's doing he's it's the perfect role for him. So it's all about getting mm -hmm. the people on the right seat. Um, but that that career ladder is posted. Um, everybody can see it. They can look at it, ask questions and figure out what they need to do to improve to that next level. Thanks for sharing what what you've learned and what's working at Ideal. Um, so for people listening or watching who want to network with you, uh, how can we get in touch? 
Uh, the best would probably be through LinkedIn on there, Jeff Cassani. Um, you could also find me at, uh, at the ideal website page, ideallandscape.com. Great. Well, and I'll put links to that in the show notes and Jeff, okay. thanks so much for coming on the landscapers guide. I appreciate it. Thank you. Had a good time. I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Jeff and I hope to see you at one of our next events, including the one on how to write killer landscape job ads. Learn more at landscapersguide.com slash events and see our show notes for a quick link to that page. My name is Jack Justice, and I look forward to talking with you next week on the Landscaper's Guide.